Richard Wagner's four musical dramas that make up the epic, known as the Ring of the Nibelung, or more informally as the Ring Cycle, is the cathedral of all operatic works. Based on themes that unite stories from Nordic mythology and Greek drama, Wagner himself saw this as his greatest achievement. It was so epic, so unusual, that a sort of cathedral was built where it could be performed according to the rules of the composer, by Reut. Every year the Ring Cycle is performed here to sold out crowds willing to brave the 16 or so hours it will take to watch and listen to this work spread over four nights. There are also people known as ringheads that travel to different cities every year to watch the Ring Cycle. Such is the power this work of art holds over some. Now, to be sure, many others despise the work, despise its excesses, its inability to take itself anything but seriously, and most of all, the man who composed it. Richard Wagner was an abomination of a human being. There is no other way to put it. Virulently anti-Semitic, he was mean-spirited and spiteful. He stole friends' money and wives, and was by all accounts a bitter and resentful little man who never felt his greatness was sufficiently celebrated. And yet this very flawed human being somehow managed to create transcendent art. The only way to comprehend this is to invoke the notion of the shadow that Jung developed in his work. It seems that Wagner's darkness of spirit found compensation in his operas. Or as one of the best explorers of his work, Father Owen Lee said, like his characters, Wagner needed healing. It's not too much to say that what he couldn't achieve in his life, Father Owen Lee continues, he did achieve in his art, which is a celebration of the completeness we all hope to find in the lives given us to lead. Now, Wagner wrote and composed the work himself. Unlike most other operatic composers, Wagner was in fact his own librettist. He began the work in 1848, writing the text first and then composing the music after, and it took him 26 years to finish the work. Now, why does this work matter, and why should you take the time to learn a little about it? I think the answer lies in Wagner's incredible connection to his unconscious. His connection was so great, in fact, that he mined the waters that would later be explored by Sigmund Freud and even more so Carl Jung. Wagner's work is archetypal, it is mythic, it explores territory in a way that had never been covered before. He revolutionized the art form, then almost killed it in the process. Above all, he took us to the depths. In the words of Father Owen Lee, Wagner was one of the first to see the psyche's potential for creation and destruction, and in his mature music dramas, he called for the healing of its warring contents. He was, perhaps like all artists in proportion to their greatness, prophetic. The story is full of dragons, giants, dwarves, all elements you would find in a fairy tale, but like many a fairy tale, the meanings encoded in the stories run very deep. Wagner may have thought, in a conscious way, that he was creating a four-part drama that addressed society's ills, and yes, he did do that, but what his unconscious tapped into is so much more. Perhaps this is why he himself was so attracted to the dramas from classical Greece. They too mind the depths, and they too reorient your psyche in untold ways. Sitting through the ring cycle rearranges the way you think, even if you can't really articulate why this is so in a conscious way. The ring cycle is about heroes, uh, but it is not only about heroes. It was Hegel who said that a hero's mission was to bring a new world into existence. Wagner created an entirely new world with heroes and anti-heroes, a dwarf and a dragon, so that he could actually transform it. What he did with the music added infinitely to the mix. His leitmotifs, which change and develop throughout the four dramas, add shading and depth to what is happening on the stage. What we see with our eyes points to a conscious apprehension of things. What the music tells us brilliantly is what the conscious mind is not picking up. The music then links us to the depths, and that's what makes it so magical. The use of leitmotifs to signal the changing and often conflicting emotions that underlie the words being sung are a stroke of genius. 
there are about 123 of them. Here's a lay motif for the curse which it plays whenever the ring takes another victim. Without a doubt, one of the most beautiful of all the late motifs is the one known as Redemption Through Love, which first appears in Act 3 of the Valkyrie and reaches its full glory near the end of the cycle as Brunhilde prepares to make the ultimate sacrifice. Wagner thought the function of the artist was to bring the unconscious part of human nature into consciousness. Robert Donington put it this way, Unconscious contents are not so easily brought up into rational consciousness, but artistic experience does yield a kind of twilight or intuitive consciousness much more disciplined than dreams, but with a similarly healing and illuminating potentiality. That is what in fact makes art powerful, the suggestion of consciousness buried deep within what appears to be unconscious nature, and this is what we find in all our myths, religious or not, as well. Join me for some follow-up videos where I will explore each of the separate works that make up the Ring Cycle. <laughs>